I'm co-host James Ash. And I'm co-host Phil Scaife. Welcome to The Business Lockdown. So welcome to today's show. Friends of mine, uh, beautiful, beautiful people. And I've just realised we first met these guys 17 years ago. Is it? No. I was saying that too. It was at Moth. 17 years. At Moth, Music on the Hill, a a small Friends Festival in Oxfordshire. Uh, Yeah. John and Jen Woodall, a a band, uh, an actual professional touring full-time band uh, uh, known as We Ghost. We Ghost are a blend uh, elements of pop, blues, jazz, soul, reggae and rock in refreshing and original way. I do know that you've done an EDM remix as well, so we can talk about that, which is... Uh, and yet this still thought to us. Yeah. <laughs> indeed. <laughs> indeed. Um, it's brilliant to have you guys on the show here today. Uh, very, you know, you're very close to my heart. And you join us from Sweden uh, today as well, which really want to, uh, to, to delve into, certainly how Sweden are handling this COVID-19 um, uh, impact that the world is feeling very differently. So... Welcome to the business lockdown, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. So much Thank for you. Us. Thank Welcome you. Welcome to the so show, guys. <laughs> Hi, Phil. So, <laughs> so, where do we start with you? Normally, we'll go right. Okay, tell us about that. But we've got full-time musicians, touring musicians, covering the likes of England, Sweden, Holland, France. You've toured. You know, you've been into America and Australia, uh, Sweden. Are handling this COVID nineteen very different, as I've just touched on there. We've yeah. got to know. Um, about that. You guys are not only, um, uh, you know, in, in, in a band together, but you're also a husband and wife as well. So you spend pretty much every minute of every uh, waking and yeah. working day together. That's so genius, yeah. let's, let's start with your passion. Well, we're all about, let's, let's, focus, let's start with the positive and your passion, which is clearly, I've seen you guys perform many times, which is clearly music. So how did, how, where did We Ghosts come from? How did that, that, that where was that, that born? Do you want me to tell it? Go, go ahead. <laughs> right. So um, it was 2003, I think. Yeah. Um, and John was very good friends with my uh, late brother. Uh, they used to share a house together. And my mum, who is a, an actress and a playwright, she had written a sort of a, a semi-biographical uh, play about her life and about dealing with her illness. She's got MS. And... Uh, My brother, um, he always pushed me uh, into music again. I used to do music when I was a teenager and I was trained in music and stuff and I'd sort of completely abandoned it at this point. So he was like, come on, let's get together and and write some stuff. And uh, and then he got Johnny involved in the project very early on. So we met in this studio in Gothenburg and um, yeah, we were, well, I, I was a smoker which I still am. Which we don't encourage. Sins. No, which we don't encourage. But <laughs> and so was I. And so none of the rest of the band were. So we were going out for a cheeky cigarette, you know, on this balcony near the... And of course we got talking. So I would say smoking is very bad for you, but it was very good for me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, would, I would like to encourage, um, I wouldn't like to encourage any of your viewers to smoke, obviously. No, of course not. No. <laughs> Must be one of those, when, you know, when you're in lockdown, um, I know a few people have sort of complained because we're not quite in lockdown. We are self-isolating here and we live, we live quite isolated. We live in quite isolated circumstances anyway. So it's kind of business as usual here. We're just cracking on with recording the album, uh, which is what we always do anyway. You know, talking about our, our passion and music, writing, recording. And, uh, and, and it's been fine for us. But I mean, obviously, you know, you read the news and... You know, we live in such weird times. But yeah, and you, guys are, you guys are still gigging. Well, just to touch on that, yeah. you guys are still, you, you're still gigging, which I, I was speaking with a friend in Barcelona the other day and um, the following morning, it was going to be her first time out of their apartment for six weeks. And yes. um, when, I, when I said, oh, I've been speaking with the guys from Sweden and they're, they're actually still doing gigs. And that was just alien to, to yeah. her, like so different. I Not very many, yeah, loads so of them have been cancelled, obviously, because people aren't going out so much. And the ones that we have done, you know, have been a bit thinner than usual. But yeah, we've been out during this, during whilst Britain has been locked down, we've been out gigging just enough to kind of not go broke, thank God, you know, because yeah, yeah. it is our economy is baked into that as well. Well, you meant to be, we were meant to be in England. Now, we should, yeah, yeah, yes, we should have been doing one of the biggest gigs of the year at, in Rochester at the Sweeps Festival. And then we were going on to a huge big festival gig in France. 
and having just sort of worked so hard to get to that level and then have it all just baff you know yeah, yeah, yeah. it is yeah. quite tough really but yeah last got we i think i said to jen the other day we gigging last weekend not this weekend last weekend because it's friday today isn't it so i lose track of the time by the way i don't, I don't think everyone does you know, it's, it's all merged into one hasn't it now it yeah, has, I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm confused what day it is today yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we, we are actually we have got a little gig tomorrow um uh, saturday um here on the island on the islands here because we live on an island just off the coast very not far from gotham there's a bridge and everything so you don't really feel like it's an island but it is and the population density is so thin there's almost no virus here anyway i mean sweden has had a problem yeah 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 but um so yeah we've been we've still carried on a little bit and um i think we've kind of enjoyed the rest as well because <laughs> we're so busy all the time yeah, yeah. yeah I shouldn't mean, say that well, really uh, people are I'm going to be on death. I'm going to get death threats. After. <laughs> yeah, forced partial retirement. <laughs> so, so have you, you're in, uh, you met in Gothenburg. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, you obviously haven't always been in Sweden. Is that, is that coincidence that you met there and now you live there or have you always well, I mean, been there? I'm from here, obviously. I am Swedish. So, so, uh, uh, and John had been living here for, Quite a few years. About five, six years by the time Jen and I met. When right. you're a working musician and you tour, it's like you're all over the place all the time, you know. I mean, so I mean, we spend, I've spent a lot of, we've, we've spent a lot of time in France, we spent a lot of time in Holland, we spent a lot of time in the UK. So, you know, where, where you live is, can be a little bit difficult to say, <laughs> really, you know, yeah. by comparison to other jobs. Because I mean, you know, literally nine, ten months of the year, we're we're on the road, you know. Well, we have been not anyway. <laughs> not lately, obviously, but uh, but yeah, no, we we moved to England when was it two thousand nine? Yeah, we or yeah we 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 developed well permanent accommodation, permanently available accommodation in the UK. I think about ten years ago. Yeah, and we've already we've always kind of kept that up. Yeah. It was a room in a council flat in uh, Lewisham to start with, but we kind of... <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Given the choice of, uh, yeah, that, that room or, or uh, Sweden for locked, lockdown accommodation. Mm. Uh, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Absolutely. But we ended up living... Um, it was really weird because obviously staying, uh, you know, in London is very expensive to live in. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, whilst you can do an awful lot of gigs in England, you know, we have a fantastic music scene in England. It doesn't pay particularly well, so unless you, you so you're out all the time playing, um, you're not going to be able to make a living. Uh, so we 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 spent like five years saving up for a deposit for a little flat, and I just got my mindset on this place in in Folkestone because uh, I missed being by the sea because I grew up by the sea and it's you know you're very close to the sea and and when uh, you mm. don't you don't quite realise how much you miss it when you live in a big city and when I started going down the coast oh my god. I can hear the waves. It's amazing, mm -hmm. um, but I managed to speed it up. So we, so we, so we actually signed um, the contract for the flat the same day that the Brexit vote was. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, literally, uh, she told me that the mortgage lady said, if you'd waited one more day, your mortgage would have been pulled. You wouldn't have been able to get one uh, because oh, I'm not wow. a British citizen. So. Yeah. Well, oh, yeah. So it was very uh, bittersweet, this whole thing, you know, um, uh, of, of sort of, yeah, finally we got a home, our own home, and then, but, you know, yeah. But. Knowing, the <laughs> knowing that the clock was ticking down to how long we could, right, yeah. Yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. And, and touching on that, what's, I've, I've seen a lot of, of things come through from bands where now there's, there needs to be s different licensing uh, in place for UK bands going over to Europe. Does, yeah. does, can you give us a bit of insight into that and how does that affect you potentially? Does that well, impact you going just to the UK or at all or the other way around? I think there's a lot of question marks about it. It but, really is, James, but, whether mean, we'll be able to do it. I mean... I think that, uh, I mean, obviously that was going to be a, a, not a very highly prioritised part of, of all these negotiations, you know, that, that now are not seemingly not happening anyway. Um, so they're talking about... Um, yeah, having to have permits for bringing in gear and bringing out gear, having to have uh, your gigs countersigned by different venues and things like that. And particularly uh, at the level that we're at, you know, any kind of extra layer of, of complexity can really, really, really affect it. It's hard enough to, to, to put together a tour. 
then actually getting all your gigs to countersign that, that it's okay for you to come in and do it it's you know it's 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 very difficult yeah mm -hmm. and you know it used to be i mean you you um you were out playing before the european union yeah. and it was like you could get stopped and it's like this cable doesn't have a license you know it could yeah it was very cool we used to, when i lived in france in the early 90s actually um just before the maastricht agreement we used to go and gig in italy and if you got the wrong bar border guard a lot of the time it just waved you through anyway but if you got the wrong border guard on the italian side you know they would hold you up for an hour and a half you know and you'd end up having to sort of slip them 20 quid you know and this kind of thing yeah so yeah it, i mean obviously also i mean I don't want to bang on too much about this blooming virus but i read in the paper today that there's maybe half the pubs that in the uk won't reopen because they've gone bust mm. and wow. um you know that's gonna. I mean, in some ways, I think there's gonna once the once you get back to normal, and you ob we obviously will. It's gonna be a huge call for DJs and bands, and because it's gonna be it's gonna be like after the war. But you know, obviously, the industry's been hit really, really, really hard, and whether whether it will be economically, whether it'll be we'll be able to, I don't know. You know, I don't know whether we've done a last gig in the UK. You ju we just don't know. I've yeah. got a tour. We've got a tour booked in August. Which is not look, already not looking good because they're not talking, mm. talking about September before they'll relax the social distancing, you know. But you know how that works, though. I mean, you because you tour around in, in non EU countries and things like mm -hmm. that. Is there a lot of uh, permits and things that you have to, to fill in to go and <laughs> not maybe you personally, <laughs> like, but you don't need I gear, do you? When you, the gear's already at the venue, in that hat he definitely does, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As you, as you said, John, sometimes you just need to slip a twenty quid. Um, yeah. to, or, or, so, or it's usually a beer or two, you know, just to yeah. like move yeah. on a smiley face. But um, so no, we've, so we've covered. So we've covered. Let's just let's just let's just have a recap. We've covered uh, smoking and the uh, <laughs> the benefits of it, and bribing bribing border guards. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> Let's crack on. What's, what's the next? What's the next topic? <laughs> yeah, but, um, You're not coming out for well here, are we? <laughs> no. I, mean, I think, I uh, think how, how, right about there being a natural resetting of the pub industry because yeah. it's different now to how it was ten years ago, isn't it? I, you, you see, you see the odd busy night during the week, but there's certainly not seven nights worth of trade for the majority of pubs. Yeah, and no. so there has to be the, the supply and demand has changed, um, and maybe it is you know the live music venues and things like that that then they have a they have another reason to be there, not just yeah. the fruit machine in the corner kind of thing. So maybe this is the mm. natural resetting of that. I yeah. did. We noticed actually. When we first started going over to England, the real lot was about 2007, 2008. We'd, we'd always had a relationship with the country. And I remember some of those busy music venues in, in London, um, for example, and elsewhere, would, we'd be go, showing up for the sound check about 7.30 and it was already mobbed. And then by about 2011, it would kind of slowly fill up during the first set. You usually do two sets when yeah. you do the pub venue type thing in the UK. And you know, the pub wouldn't really, really get sort of really ramo till about 9.30. Whereas, you know, it had been, those venues had been ramo from about 7.30. Yeah. So I think, yeah, you're right. I mean, it, 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 we've been reading for de you know, ages about this industry in decline. How are all those Beverly, there's some cracking pub gigs in Beverly. The Sun is one. Oh yeah, I mean you've got the Sun, the Corner House, Nellie's. I mean we're, we've got we've got such a really good um, music scene, and obviously we had the Folk Festival, yeah, um, which, which, which again, I mean that's that's really got some size to it now, um, and re yes, really yeah. great. It's no more though. It's the, the it's no more the Folk Festival. They, they, that's it gone. No, but there's, st there's still like the independent version, isn't there, that, that, that still happens. Oh, yeah, it's not still, got the, it's not got the pinnacle like, like it used to have. Mm -hmm. But there's, there's always that. Um, it's almost, I think, cycling and, um, and that mm -hmm. sort of, that new music, local band type, it, that's what Beverly's really got as its identity, I think. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, it is. It's, it's good. And Hull is a cracking music scene. Yeah. I always think yes. that more, you know, because it's traditionally, it's been quite a sort of downtrodden place. 
And you know, that's where that's what breeds a great music. You know, it's like played Brixton in the in the seventies and the eighties. You know, we were really impressed because we travel around and you know you end up supporting or being supported by local bands and we can be a bit sniffy about that kind of thing as pros but we were always yeah <laughs> we were always really impressed with the standard of uh in in hull actually yeah some, and some cracking venues there too the adelphi yeah. for example <laughs> legendary adelphi yeah but there's been quite a few of those little uh, those music stories from the hull scene come out on the show hasn't there with with various guests it's amazing how there's been an overlap yeah. When you delve into people's background, it's like, oh yeah, so I was there and there was this band and then they went on to become, yeah. there's all, yeah. sort, all sorts of... Uh, well, I remember when we played Adelphi, I think it was the first time or something, and, and just before, a few weeks before, you'd had first aid kits uh, there playing, and this was before they had sort of broke. Before they were David Cameron's favourite band. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they put that on all their posters, don't you think? And, uh, no, but and it's funny because I noticed that in England, I would often hear about Swedish music that I'd never heard about yeah. in Sweden uh, before, you know, they became a name, a household name in Sweden. And that was just an example of one of those acts that I heard about. Yeah. Uh, that sort of, so yeah, it's cool. Yeah. Well, I think I think Humber Street Sesh is the well Humber Street Sesh is the I think it's officially the largest independent festival, or it's it's, it's certainly ah. got a, a certain title to it. I mean, it's what they have thirty to forty thousand people every year there, and wow, um, that, that, that and that's been developed from um, the Sesh, which has been on a Tuesday night for sixteen, seventeen years or, or something, and. Yeah. I mean, it's been an absolute honour. Um, I've hosted the main stage for the last three years and been oh, the whoa. hype guy. What and and that's been a real, like, that's just been an absolute pleasure. I had, I had, um, I had Phil's uh, youngest son, Oakley, on my shoulders last year oh. at his first on the street sesh to thousands of people all cheering him as he's like, got his hand in there. It was just like, brilliant. So, I mean, yeah, Hull's come on leaps and bounds in it, certainly, uh, not yeah. only just musically. Um, yeah. Sorry, but, I mean, was, the, the connection of Hull and music and you guys is that we, um, if people um, have seen, we had Paul Spence uh, on an earlier episode, and mm -hmm. uh, Paul suffered, uh, Paul suffered a unprovoked uh, a, a, a attack with a, a severe brain injury, and um, that was in a bar called Pave. Yeah. And, um, and you guys were playing that, you were the band. That were, yeah, we were that night, and, and, and the yeah. bar got shut down. The bar yeah. was shut, yeah. completely shut down. And um, I mean, yeah, Paul's story of recovery for three years. He's got his own brain injury charity now. And I remember when I when I uh, spoke with you the other day, and I, I said to you, I said, my mate is the is my mate who got injured in Taban. You've since watched his episode, so it's yeah. it's interesting to to connect the dots. And I'm that was so happy yeah, I remember that... speaking to you guys. Mm. It was fantastic to see, you know, and. Because I, you know, one when you mentioned that, oh my god, yes, that was a really traumatic night, you know, because it was it was so traumatic, and uh, and to see that that he has this incredible journey, this this man has gone on, and his his attitude uh, is is just so incredible. Yeah, really inspiring, inspiring and, really and inspiring. And yeah, so, so, a, so ter hi. a terrible thing. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'm hi, so Paul. pleased. I'm so pleased to Paul. That you Sorry to have provided the musical soundtrack for the worst <laughs> night of your life, though. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, yeah. yeah. well, <laughs> <laughs> you know. and he, and he will laugh at that as well. I know it. You know, it's, yeah, it's and he will laugh at that, of course. That's, no, that's, that's absolutely total coincidence. I mean, we don't. You know us, Jen. We don't really do sort of. You know, it's not like we're not really like an oi band whose music sort of encourages violence, really. No. But. Uh, it was really, uh, with, with the whole scene as well, just, uh, I really noticed that prior to Hull City, ty the Tigers football team, getting into the Premiership, and when they did, the, you could literally see the city change. You could sort of see the money yeah. going into the city, couldn't you? Yeah. yeah. And I mean, obviously, they've been a bit up and down. You know, they're one of those teams. But, um, you know, all of a sudden, you know, you, you, instead of being a sort of very good football team in the, in the Championship, you know, you had to have places where Premier League footballers could hang out. And, the, and we really, yes. you know, we were there at that time. That was Pay was the first one, wasn't Pay it? Pay was like the first one, sort of... I think, of, on that street. Yeah, that, that, yeah, 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 absolutely. Mm -hmm. that one of those cool venues that then also put music on and good craft beer. And yeah, yeah it been, was great. Yeah, there's, there's, yeah. there's certainly been a lot since. What I'm keen on is we've, we've kind of touched into um, Sweden right now and how that looks is... Well, 
I, knowing that we have you guys on the show today, did a little bit of research, and uh, Phil and I spoke the other day. I said, "Oh, we've got you guys coming on and in Sweden," and we had a chat about how the how Sweden are dealing with uh, with COVID nineteen. And I, I've done a bit of research since, and although the numbers are way way lower in in neighbouring countries, mm. what Sweden now say is that when they come out of lockdown, that their their numbers will spike and actually uh, accelerate and grow. Um, further than, than Sweden's, whereas Sweden have kind of controlled sensibly. Yes, there are higher numbers, but in a way, also protecting their economy. Um, yeah, yeah. that's been sensible from doing. It. Is that would that would that be I right? I think to that say? that is. I think that is the the tactics that they've gone for. I mean, I, you know, I'm not an expert at this. I have been following it, and and every day at two o'clock they have a press conference with you know uh, the experts talking about the current situation and everything. Um, and I think they did a bit of a calculated sort of, you know, this is unavoidable. This is obviously a, a really serious situation and there are people who are going to die. Um, Sweden does have, you know, every country has its own um, history and its own, uh, what's that called? Um, <laughs> Get a bit of Swedish for you there. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Um, yeah, anyway, so so obviously we have a small population in Sweden. Um, we have a, a long uh, tradition of uh, having a very, you know, people have to take responsibility. I think they really and believe so, yeah. in this idea of, of it's um, a collaboration, you know, um, in order for a democracy to work, people have to be responsible as well. Um, mm. So, yeah, I'm, I'm sort of feeling quite positive to the whole thing yeah, me too. really uh, and they, i think you're right that, that the economy will look stronger and that at the end of the day that the sort of death rate is probably going to be about the same as just spreading it out a little bit more so it's, obviously the, the healthcare system is under a tremendous amount of pressure as they are everywhere um, you know? but it would have been a lot worse if everyone just came all at once um mm. And I think, yeah, also the idea of, of the, the herd immunity. I don't, I don't know. But, Not you know. Sure. They were very early with the social, with with the restrictions that they they've got. Though, I mean, right off the bat, they they stopped any gathering of more than five hundred, and within a few days, that went down to fifty. Yeah. So you know the gigs that we've been doing, James. They're, they're obviously not the biggest ones. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, sold out again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Forty-nine people were here. Um, so yeah, but the little gig, yeah, we've been very, very grateful to be doing. You know the gigs that we've been doing during this period. But um, yeah, so there were very, very, very early responders, and and with this two meters distance social distancing you can't go to the bar and get a drink you know the tables are all the waitresses and the waiters gloves on very 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 well quite a, earlier on uh, that, that, sorry that's quite interesting then so so the way gigs are happening right now because there are still some going on there's a limited number of people in the venue and it's seated is that right that's yeah. right yeah Right, because this is this is potentially looking to the future of how the UK could potentially come out of lockdown in a social aspect. Yeah, it was quite Did interesting to, to see how it worked. Yeah, well, I think it has. Obviously, it's not going to be one hundred percent, and there have mm. been um, complaints that it's not. You know, and I think I know a lot of people, obviously, who have restaurants and bars. And their complaints are that it's very, very hard to police. Obviously, you can mm. you can have space between the tables and stuff, but you know, coming up to people and saying, "Are oh, you family? Do you live in the same house? Are you allowed to sit at the same table?" I mean, you know, who's going to do that? It's very well, it difficult. does happen though. The cops have been quite strict. Yeah, but then the cops are doing it. But being the bar owner yourself and policing people is hard. Mm. And as soon as alcohol is is is, you know, people forget. You know, when they first sit down, it might be okay. Yeah. But after four beers, oh, yeah. You know, yeah. You're, you're doing what you're doing. So I think, of course, this is not something that is running seamlessly without any problems. Mm. But uh, it's also been lucky that it's been this time of year. So the weather has been nice. So, so a lot, so for example, the gig we're doing tomorrow on Saturday, uh, it's going to be outside. Um, and that's what they mostly try to go for is, is having outside gigs. Um, yeah, we, uh, we do a lot of social distancing. Yeah, which also takes down the, the risk you know, a lot. And the other thing is, I mean, there's, there, there are two sides to this as well. I mean, COVID-19 is not the only illness in the world, is it? I mean, 
people mm. are talking about what about the mental health costs mm. you know yeah. people in are they in the 50th day in lockdown are you in your 50th day of lockdown phil something like that isn't it uh, it feels like the 5000th with uh, yeah, exactly. it, it's to home school I, I i don't i don't know they're all the same but it's a high number <laughs> yeah <laughs> somebody said after after 50 days of lockdown that jolene is quite welcome to come and take my man <laughs> <laughs> Referencing the song, <laughs> but uh, you know, I mean, there's there's been a there's been a lot of mental health issues. Yeah, it's it's not the only game. So you know, and the ventilators and the healthcare and the hospital beds, you know, and the vaccines and what they don't pay for themselves. You know, so I mean, if you're just going to completely close your economy, mm -hmm. to, I wonder whether we won't know. We won't know probably for a year whether this and it's a dangerous experiment because you're experimenting with people you know, yeah, yeah. people's lives. Yeah. It's looking pretty good for Sweden. It is looking pretty good. Mm. Um, I think, I think it's, been... quite, it's quite interesting. There, there are certain countries that stand out with their statistics as a, as a model to, to look yeah. at, to analyze. And if this thing was to happen again, to have almost a blueprint. Mm. And I think Australia were, were, were very good with the way they uh, isolated themselves as a nation yeah. very early on. Greece, their health service couldn't support, it would not be able to cope. So they immediately locked down and they've got very, very good statistics from this. And obviously mm. Sweden's taken a slightly different tact, mm. um, even to the close neighbors. Mm. Um, and so it's gonna be very interesting again to see what the final sort of like verdict is on that and, and what, what the course is. I think it's good that there's different versions. Yeah. So you can see. Because this might be, God forbid, but you know, this, this kind of thing could happen again. You know, yeah. I mean, it's, it's like, yeah. it's not the only illness in town. We've had, we've had pandemics before. I mean, you do feel very particularly for the UK, but I, I don't, I really don't think the response was quick enough. And, um, you know, is uh, that, I'm, is that the opinion from overseas? Very much in? So. Cause it's definitely an opinion from within the UK. It's interesting to know what our yeah. neighbors think it is isn't it james i mean yeah yeah i thought well I, look i was in talks with with friends in in morocco in italy in new york mm. uh, in spain barcelona and and they all seem to um just go right okay this is this is what we need to do and you've got serious fines and um and jail time you know looming if you get caught you know breaking the rules it's 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 serious stuff and i mean like when i've seen this before when when the UK are, are told, oh, kind of um, just respect social distancing, they're almost like given an option to do so. Um, it, it's, uh, when, when you see the supermarket shelves being emptied early on and yeah. all of that footage, and then the alcohol aisles that are all empty, except one full crate of Corona beer. And you think, <laughs> <laughs> there's no hope. If, if that, if that, if that, is what we're dealing with, really. Yeah. There's no hope. That's where you've got to go. You don't give people an option. You can't give people an option, in my opinion. You just go, if this is, if we're going down this route, this is the route we're going down. And it's, you know, people have been disciplined generally in, in the likes of Barcelona, in Italy, um, and, and New York, and respecting the rules, you know? I mean, even in Asia, it's a site, that, like the, the, the people have gone, right, this is what we need to do and, and how we do it. And so- yeah. we'll South Korea, they've, they've really cracked it incredibly well. It's only been yeah, like yeah. three. They've got the same population as UK. They've had like three hundred deaths, yeah. as opposed to nearly thirty thousand, or more, possibly more than forty thousand. Thirty thousand in hospitals. So yeah. But is it is it that is it that is it that British mentality? We've touched on this before in previous episodes. Whereas if you if you're told to do one thing, you'll do the opposite. You'll you'll fight well, against that. I think it does have to do with the relationship that you have with with the state with yeah. the states absolutely, yeah. and and also you know, whatever has been going on politically in your country for the past 10 years will obviously really, really affect, uh, you know, for example, if, if the NHS is underfunded. Uh, in Sweden, that's, everything is relative. Uh, and, and in Sweden, there has been an awful lot of, of criticism about uh, the downscaling and underfunding of our healthcare system as well. Um, and I, I heard this really amazing show the other day uh, on radio um, about Sweden used to have these massive reserves. I think they started doing it just after the war. Uh, and they would have these huge chambers of just everything, you know, that you could possibly imagine. PPE, PPE is it called? And, uh, you know, they would have 
machines that you could assemble to have need, you know, to do, uh, to do medical procedures, you know, and they had these huge reserves. And then when Sweden, partly when Sweden joined the EU, which is in the 90s, uh, I think they started sort of thinking that, oh no, you know, in future we won't need this anymore because we'll just be all collaborating together. And, and so it's slowly they started just dismantling the whole thing uh, uh, without anyone really criticizing it or wondering why. Uh, and now we obviously could have really used those reserves. And I think this is something that, that is being talked about very much at the moment, whether we need to build up having all this, uh, you know, stock of things again, you know. Um, yes. Well, we're, um, we've, we've got a few minutes left. Now, I, I, I would love to start talking about more creative, creative uh, topics. But, um, you know, because it's like we've, We've gone down. This is the thing with with, with how we uh, how we run the shows is that it's like we'll see where where it takes us, and um, I think what what it lends our, uh, lends us to, uh, to to be covering um, in the, in the near future is pure more creative music insight with you guys. Um, yeah. but it is an important day today. Um, that, you know, we've got was it seventy five years, Phil? Yes, seventy fifth okay. anniversary of VE Day. Yeah. 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 Big thing. Mm. Yeah, abs absolutely, and 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 even bigger this year, I think, because it's it's bringing communities together yeah. in a way that's so needed right now. Um, it's kind of like right now, anyone's looking for any excuse, I think, to uh, to like to just form community and just get back in in contact with people, and so. Perfect excuse. Perfect. It's sort of poetic as well, you know, because here we all are now in these, you know, this is the kind of crisis that, that, that many countries haven't experienced since mm. yeah. that time, really. You so, know. There are some, there are a lot of reverberations on the people are sort of saying that when this period is over, it's going to be a little bit, I mean, my, my, my dad is a bit young for this, but he, you know, he was kind of an early teenager um, at the end of the war. And, um, you know, they talk about this, this, you know, this, can you imagine, you know, you being bombed, you, even right up until the end, they had the, the V2s and everything, you know, and I mean, he was a, he was a little boy during the Blitz, you know, and he could tell the difference between a Heineken and a Mischer Smith from the sound of the engine, you know, and um, wow. then this incredible euphoria, you know, when all of a sudden there were no more restrictions, you were allowed to go out, you allowed to have your lights on, for example, you know, yeah, you, know, you could find your way to the pub better, you know, and it, 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 perhaps there are going to be some um, some reverberations there, you know, like with with the end of this period that we are currently going through. Yeah. Um, so I think I think, yeah, the spirit, the spirit of the blitz sort of thing is one of the things that's kind of keeping us going, isn't it? Really keep calm and carry on, etc. You know, that's where that phrase originated, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, this afternoon we've got uh, we've got Churchill's speech on TV. Yeah. So yeah. And how, as a as a as a as a father, Phil, three three kids, how will you how will you celebrate as a as a family? You know, how much insight will you give to the kids? What are they aware of already? How, how does that look? Yeah, well, I mean, it's, it's very similar to sort of like Remembrance Day, isn't it? Um, mm -hmm. You know, the the poppy uh, for for. The younger generations, wars now get played out on TV, don't they? You know, it's yeah. uh, you. It's it, and making making the distinction between a, a computer game and what you're seeing on CNN is it, sometimes almost almost the barriers are almost invisible. Yeah. So, to keep it um, very relevant, very real, um, a, a, you know, a, a, a warts and all discussion about it, I think is very important. And mm -hmm. and it, and and about you know the lives the lives that were lost because. Wars now are played out via a remote control, aren't they? It's it, it's a different version, but it, it is also an amazing thought. I think to think that within the light, I mean, seventy five years, there's, there are quite a few citizens of both our countries who are a lot older than that. Who you know, mm -hmm. people live to be ninety, ninety five routinely now. That within the life of a human, there was a shooting war in Europe because we. We, you know, we carry on Brexit or whatever, you know, but we carry on. I mean, if James gets a gig in Berlin, he doesn't sort of think, oh, I'm English. I can't go there. Do you know what I mean? That never mm. crops up now, does it? Mm. And Brexit or whatever, you know, like you say, you find a way around it, hopefully. But to think that just 75 years ago, there was, you know, I'm not saying that we're always such great friends with the Germans and the French with international disputes and everything. Although on a personal level, that never seems to be a thing. But that, that, 
you think you, the way we carry on, you think that we'd had a thousand years of peace in Europe, wouldn't you? But we, we, we haven't, you know. Yeah. It's only a lifetime ago. There was, you know, it's amazing. Tanks, it, British well, it tanks is, it, in Germany. I think as, as, in, as, in, as unimaginable as, as, it, as it is, it's mm. so important to, to realise and, and yeah. to remember as well, especially for the younger generations coming through. And it's criminal when you hear these stories that it, it's deemed that... Should... Oh, we lost <laughs> There we are. Education, education and awareness is key. And when they say that the people some, sometimes say it shouldn't be part of the curriculum and you're like that, you know, that on, people yeah. need yeah. To, to, it needs to be prevented in the, in the future. But and also the, the, the numbers, the, the numbers involved, like, you know, the UK is hitting 30,000 deaths through, through COVID. The, the scale of that number compared to the number through a war. I mean, James, you've been to the, you've been to the graves. So, uh, I mean, the, the scale when you see those things. It's, it, you, you, actually, it's 10 years to the day. It's 10 years to the day, because I was there for the 65th. Wow, I've just realized uh, that. Yeah, uh, I, went, I went to, um, so my great granddad, nicknamed Lofty, was, um, was shot and killed in, uh, in Fran Lou, in France. Wow. And um, me, me, my father, and his two brothers went across in, um, in my uncle's car, the smallest uh, four door. Um, production car ever, which was just an. So I'm driving the smallest production car across like hundreds of miles from through France and Belgium with my dad and his two brothers who rarely see each other, reverting back to being twelve year olds. Wanting to be <laughs> As it's like it was an interesting I trip. <laughs> it was an you know like I've I've only been scared maybe three times driving in my whole life. I'm a confident driver, and when you drive that that that, that car with all of this tension in it. Past the lorry and it kind of sucks you in, and you, then you, and then as you pass it, 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 and then it spits you out. And we had the Scot, the, the Scottish side. My great granddad was Scottish, and we had the Scottish side of the family um, join us in a seven-seater Nissan Qashqai down the motorways. <laughs> like anyway, but more poignant is that uh, yeah, we visited um, the church that, um, that that he was killed, and um, you could see the bullet holes all across the walls, and he was the most Crazy. senior at the time and had to make the decisions and they got they got surrounded by Germans with the tanks and and was killed there and we we all had like polo shirts with his face on it a picture of wow. him and my uncle brought out a 20 odd year old his favorite whiskey that my grandma had purchased in memory of him and kept so he pulled this whiskey out that we me and the Scottish side of the family all drank very very poignant and uh, and I've just remembered that is exactly 10 years wow. ago that we, we did that and um, we, we went on the beaches and you had all the Americans come over yeah. And um, we visited all the, all the graves, like thousands upon thousands of graves. And so, yeah, it's as unimaginable as it, as it, as it is in many respects. It's also something that we should, we should always be, be very mindful and respectful of, and, and more so important for the younger generations. Um, absolutely. absolutely. So, but um, finishing on a lighter note, to do with you guys in music, so where can people find it? Because we will come out of this COVID-19. Um, <laughs> um, Stronger together, which is our our strap line, of course. And so, in the meantime, where can people people find you? Where's your website and your social hubs? Well, our website is uh, weghosts.co.uk, and on there you can uh, sort of link to to all the other social media that we have. Uh, we're very active on Facebook, mostly uh, on our Facebook page, which is that's the best. Ghosts. The best too. We are going to be doing. We we did do a, a live sort of stream uh, last weekend, which was very popular, mm -hmm. and we are we are going to be doing that again now during during this uh, period of lockdown because it's just so weird to not be able to come over and, and play to, yeah, to people, you know. Yeah. And, and um, so and and actually, I was like, oh no, I don't want to do that. And then once I did, I was like, wow, this is fantastic because it does feel like you are like this you know i mean i feel like we're hanging out now it's just really nice yeah, we are and so, um, it's a virtual hangout it's it? a worth virtual hangout it's a virtual hangout and it, isn't it funny that although we're called the business lockdown we love the fact that we're speaking with musicians you know about about covid about creativity about remembrance of, of the war to yeah. you know we, we meet with child psychologists entrepreneurs tech cool. experts yeah. it's it's great so and it's, it's been an absolute yeah. pleasure for you to, to join Thank us in, in so likewise much. nice to meet you phil yeah, always likewise you, thank you very much for joining us <laughs> thank, thank you, you. So and then thank, you. thank you very much thank Cheers. you see you guys bye-bye
Thank you so much for joining us on the Business Lockdown. Please comment, like, share and subscribe to help build our global community. We look forward to seeing you all soon.